Welcome to the Smart Dating Academy podcast. I'm Bella Gandhi, the founder of Smart Dating Academy and your host. I started Smart Dating Academy in 2009 because I had this crazy knack of giving people dating advice that actually worked, that I took. I've been married for almost 25 years, and now my company helps people to date smarter and to find love. This podcast is meant to bring more love into your life no matter where you are and what you do and we're here to bring more life into your love smart daters happy monday and welcome back i am god you know this is my favorite time of year and why is this my favorite time of year because something amazing happens at this time of year and i want to help you get ready for peak dating season. We should just start calling it PDS because we've been talking about this for so many years at this point. So I know you're thinking about it. You want all the juice on how to get ready. So I'm bringing one of my favorite people, one of my favorite guests, one of my favorite humans on (laughs) earth. I'm bringing you Lindsay, the superstar of insider secrets to dating. My right hand shares my dating brain. Lindsay, (laughs) I'm so glad you're here with me. Let's empty our brains out for all these beautiful people globally that want to know what the hell is peak dating season and why we're here. So welcome. Thank you. Thank you. And by the way, why haven't we been calling it PDS all these years? (laughs) It's way better than PMS. It was so much more fun. I love it. (laughs) And by the way, nobody talks about PMS anymore. Like, is that even a thing? Oh, I know. You're right. Maybe it's all these, we have too many good treatments now. I don't know. You're right. Nobody really does talk about PMS, but they should all be talking about PDS, which is so much more fun, so much more exciting and doesn't hurt as much. Well, listen, you guys, as I, as I squirrel off into PMS, (laughs) Lindsay often tells me it's like, I have squirrel brain. And if there's something bright, glossy and red outside of the window, I'll be like, oh my God, Let's look at that. Let's talk about that. And then I need to come back to center again. So and I'm, I'm always like, Bella, like, back to the notes, Bella, back to the, Bella, notes, back back to the, to the schedule. Yes, yes, exactly. So this is my creative nature that comes to haunt me constantly. So I'm back to PDS versus PMS. So <laughs> um, now peak dating season, right? I mean, we've had Smart Dating Academy since October of 2009. And I don't think peak dating season was a thing or anybody was really talking about it until maybe, I don't know, 2014, 2015. 2015, Yeah. Yeah. Right. Because you've been with me since 2013. I remember we did something on the Today Show about it and that had to be maybe 2015, 16. And now it's a thing. I'm definitely doing Good Morning America on January 7th because the busiest online dating day of the year is shortly thereafter. But let me come back to center and let's talk about peak dating season. For those of you that are new to us, what is it? Think about December, January, February. Okay. And what happens around this time? There's two drivers for peak dating season. 50 to 80 percent membership increases on all the dating apps and dating sites on planet earth, right? Like what is going on? People often say like, God, I would have never thought this. Everybody thinks that dating numbers increase in the summer. We talk about summer love. We're talking, we're off of work. Our kids are off of work and it feels like that's a better time to date. Au contraire, mon frere, this is the right time because there's two drivers, the holidays and new year, new me, right? I mean, we yeah. see this every single year. We do. And it follow, it, we, we joke, it always follows like the weight loss trends. You know, if you try to go to the gym in the beginning of January, you are like pushing people off the treadmill left and right. The classes are full. All of the regular people are like, who are all these strangers in my class? Same thing happens online. People get excited if they've thought about trying dating before and they haven't been on the sites, they'll jump on like gangbusters. If they've taken a break for a while, they get right back on because everybody is ready to do something fresh. It's really, I think that makes it so much more fun. I'm cracking up and having a squirrel moment here because I know 
as you know, someone who loves to work out, I go to the gym and I know January 2nd, I'm like, I'm not going to be able to find a parking space at the gym. (laughs) And then last year, I remember taking my own advice, swallowing my own Kool-Aid saying, reframe this positively. Wow. How amazing that there's so many more people that want to be concerned about their health and wellness. And they are now coming to the gym as well. So (laughs) that made me less aggravated when I was looking for a parking space, because I thought of all these people that are going to do good for their body. And speaking of, if you haven't listened to the episode two weeks ago about how to become more psychotically optimistic. I talk about positive reframing. You can be like, damn it. I hate all these people. I can't find a parking space. Or you can say, thank goodness. All these people are here because the world is going to get healthier in general. And isn't that lovely? So go back and listen to that episode. But now let's, right. That's a, by the way, I just want to give you credit for that. That is a very good reminder. See so guys, we teach all this and we also have to put to practice everything we talk about too. So one a very nice reminder. I like it. 100%. We're yeah. not perfect humans. We don't live despite in what that... you all think and how we feel most every day. Just kidding. Besides the I know. I know you all think we're perfect, <laughs> right? And we really appreciate that we do have those 1% moments. Yeah. Just kidding. We're like we struggle with the same things every day, maybe in different pie pieces of our lives, right? Because life has all these different pieces, right? For you guys, dating might be one of them, right? We're in relationships. We have kids, we have work. We're all living in that same vat of what we call life, right? And we have to constantly, in some ways, revise our own mindset. So yes, positively reframing and go back and listen to that psychotically optimistic episode. I might go back and listen to myself. Just <laughs> kidding. Um, but I will. I'll put, I'll put my headphones in before bed and I'll just listen to your voice. Just listen to me. Just listen to me. Um, oh, I like it at night. It's really funny. I was actually out taking a walk in the park and, you know, I looked horrible and had a baseball hat on and my AirPods and this woman walked past me. She's like, Hey, I'm listening to you right now. Your podcast. I was like, Oh my God, I need to wear sunglasses because I look horrible. And I'm really embarrassed that someone saw me. Isn't that very funny? Well, it is, but what a cool, I mean, I love that the podcast Bella. moment. You guys, it was a yes. podcast moment. Yeah, so wear your sunglasses. Cause you never know who's <laughs> going to see you when you don't have mascara on. So now let's talk about back to peak dating season. So, you know, everybody is getting online right now, right? New year, new me, January one just does that. Like Lindsay's saying weight loss, right? I want to get a new job. I want to have new friends. What are the new resets that we're going to do? Right? So what happens is all these new people are getting online because everybody's like, well, I hate the dating apps, but maybe I'll give it a try again. Some people come in there bright eyed and bushy tailed saying, I've been so scared to try the apps, but maybe I'm going to give it a try. Maybe I'll be open to love. And if this resonates with you, this is so the right time for you to think about dipping your toe into the pool. So much so that if you're in this pool of people, Sundays are typically the busiest day of the week, right? Lindsay, as you and I both yes. know, we tell our clients maybe launch on Saturday or Sunday once we're coaching with them yeah. because Sunday evenings right after dinner between 6 and 10 yeah. p.m. are the busiest times in any given week to yeah. be online. Now, why is that? I'm sure we can posit an answer to that, right? Right. Well, absolutely. I mean, I think people get online because just like you're looking at your calendar to see what work meetings you have first thing Monday morning, you're also thinking through the week and looking at your schedule and wanting to sort of see who just got on tonight that I want to start a conversation with for the next few days that I could potentially go on a date with or move to the phone or go on and have a video call with by the end of the week. So Same thing. Evenings are a great time to be online. And we're not saying if you miss your Sunday evening after between 7 and 9 p.m., oh, you're done for the week. This is, you know, the online dating pool is like the ocean. There are is always water. There are always people. There are just certain times where you're going to catch a bigger wave. 
And so Sunday nights are a great time and, or any time in the evening. And people often ask like, what if I just am an early bird and I get up at 3 a.m.? I'm like, no, don't message people at 3 a.m. Yeah. Don't do that. But other than that, any other time in the evening. Right. You can earmark people to yes. message, write down things, screenshot yes. them, whatever it is, but no messaging at 3 a.m. because no. you're an insomniac, right? Get on Audible, <laughs> listen to a book, like do something yes. else, right? Get yourself into a more positive mind space. But yeah, so Sundays are definitely the busiest times. And now we've got the Sunday after New Year's Day. Now, what's particularly peculiar about 2023 yeah. is New Year's Day is a Sunday. Yeah. Okay. So I had a call with one of my favorite people at Match two weeks ago, and we talked about what Match calls Dating Sunday, what we call the busiest online dating day of the year. And we're all co-predicting that it's going to be Sunday, January 8th. So put that in your calendar. You actually yeah. have extra time this year, right? Yes. If you can get online New Year's Day, if you're not too hungover or, you know, you're not resolved to not, you know, use your phone or your apps on New Year's Day, whatever it is, try it on New Year's Day, but get prepared that you've got this extra week until January 8th. So yes. match will have the busiest moment. I mean, typically they predict that sometime between the 8 p.m. and 9 p.m. hour where you are locally is going to be the busiest moment of the busiest day. I've seen 8.51 p.m. I've seen 8.52 <laughs> p.m. Again, don't obsess, but just know yes. that you want to be, if you've got the wherewithal, to be in the ocean that day, as Lindsay said, the wave will be cresting. But if you miss it or you sleep through it or you're too hungover, it's okay because you know yes. what's going to happen tomorrow morning? There's still a lot of fish in the sea. Okay. Exactly. So, exactly. So, and so the fun thing too is because we're talking about peak dating season more and more they're getting in the media and they're putting the message out, other people are going to be really inspired by this too. So you guys will get to hear about it here, but the message is out there that the online dating, this is the best time to be online right now. People are going to feel more energetic and more excited about it. And that's only going to help you fellow daters, because we're going to give you great tips today on what you can do to prepare for that before everybody else gets on site, gets on the site. Exactly. Exactly. So by the time you're hearing this, it's going to be before Christmas and you've yes. got time. And remember, this is really as much as we're focused on gifting everybody else and getting our houses ready for family. Remember, you deserve a gift from yourself. And that gift is investing in yourself and preparing for yourself, right? So think of yourself as highly as you think of others. And this is a gift that you're going to give yourself. Why? Because you deserve it, right? And give yourself maybe an hour a day to prepare, do something that gives you joy. And remember, preparing for something that's really important to you intentionally. And if you're what do I want in 2023? If one of you are always ask yourself that question in life, yeah. right? What do I really want? And if something that you really want is finding the lid to your pot, finding love, doing things differently, then you deserve the gift of your own time, your own effort, your own energy, your own investment to doing this. So make yourself, give yourself the gift of your time every day. I kind of love this. This just came to me. It's Do you true. like this? Like giving, I, I'm time. nodding my head and smiling at you because I'm, I'm drinking the Kool-Aid Bella and oh, yes, you're, oh, you're exactly right. And when we're saying, give yourself the gift of the time, make sure you're setting reasonable goals. So what can often happen, sometimes even going back to the gym analogy, is people can overdo it, jump all in, put too much time up front, and then get fatigued. And what we want to encourage is good dating takes patience, perseverance, and being really positive. So you have to look at this like you're playing the long game. So give yourself the time, but still just spend a small amount of time, 30 minutes a day dating. 30 minutes a day on the apps and then shut it down and then refresh and do it again the next day. But don't go all in and say, it's peak dating season, five hours every day, you are going to burn out. And that just isn't good for anybody. 
consistency is the key here. 100%. And I know as we're all talking about weight loss, right? It's like, if I vow to lose 10 pounds and I go to the gym and I eat well one day, I'm like, why isn't that 10 <laughs> pounds gone? And I know you're all feeling yes. me hard on this one, right? But remember, we all have that Amazon Prime mentality that as soon as we start to do something, like Lindsay's saying, don't spend five hours online. Don't spend five hours at the gym because this is a marathon and it's like marathon training. It's not a sprint, right? Sometimes it, it blows my mind that when people do train for marathons. Lindsay's husband, Ryan, has run a gajillion marathons. I have not, and I never will for the and record. neither will I. I never will either. <laughs> my body would fall apart. And, you know, Lindsay and I are meant for different things than marathons, right? And that's why we're your marathon trainers for dating, <laughs> right? And so really thinking about, you know, when people train for marathons, it's like a six to eight month training program where you're running a little bit different every day, every week. But in the dating process, we want to get online and find love January 12th, but that's not yes. going to happen here. So knowing I've got my patience, positivity and perseverance in mind, and I'm going to do something every day that's going to bring me joy. And I'm going to spend a little bit of time on the apps, but I'm playing the long game here. I'm not expecting instant gratification. So these yes. are really important things, you guys, in keeping yourself playing the long game, because let me tell you what, Dating is not a short game. No, no. And as much as we wish it could, and again, you're hearing about everybody coming online, what we don't want to happen is that you start feeling, we don't want you feeling bad if it seems like everybody's online and you're not in a relationship by the end of January. There is no pressure. Your outcome, if you stick with this, you will meet somebody great. If you stick with it, just don't give up. And we don't know when the lid to your pot is coming, but if you're doing a little bit every single day, he or she will show up. And we promise you that. And that's one of those things where you want to take a minute and step back and celebrate small successes. So I look at it as every, at the end of every week, just have a moment of reflection and say, all right, what did I do this week that I'm really proud of for dating? How many did I set up my one phone call? Did I have a video date? Did I get online every single day? Did I give somebody, did I smile when I was out and just engage with people in real life? Like, what did you do? Then take a step back and look at it at the end of every month. What did you do that month? How many dates did you go on? The average person is going on one date a month. If you're going out twice every other week, hey, guess what? You are doubling that. If you're going out every single week, that's four new people a month. You calculate that over the year, like you're doing the things you need to do and then giving yourself credit along the way. So like, we want you guys to have a little party for yourself at the end of every week, at the end of every month, hell, at the end of every single day, if you have to, because just the key is that you don't get discouraged. It's so, so true. I mean, and we've had clients saying I've had 80 different people I've been messaging. I've been on 40 dates yet. And I still haven't found someone. And we're like, and okay. it's okay because we're going to keep running until we do. So don't discourage yourself. Yes. Celebrate yourself instead. Celebrate the things that you did, right? Don't compare yourself to others. Remember comparison is the thief of joy. Oh, good one. Okay. It's and true. when we compare ourselves to others, when we compare ourselves to what we think, well, it happened for my neighbor right away. She got herself online and met someone a week later. And now they're in the Bahamas for the holidays. You know what? Comparison is the thief of joy. Send her love and her boo love in your heart and know that you too are going to find someone, but don't gauge your own journey by anybody else's because someday somebody's going to be inspired by your journey and go, God, it happened for her or him so quickly. Why not me? And you're going to know in your own heart. No, it didn't. You just didn't see my whole backstory. Yes. Yes. Oh, that's such a good point. And I think you're right. And even when you can, if you feel like everybody's going on a million dates in the beginning of the month or this through this winter, also recognize that we still don't want you to run in and rush things. 
if you feel like everybody else is moving fast and jumping into relationships right away, if you've been listening to our podcast, you know that we are slow and steady eddies. We like things to evolve. We like you to build in a lot of time getting to know somebody and keeping a good dating pipeline going. So one of the keys for being successful is making sure that you really are hedging your bets, that you're still, that you're not jumping to a relationship just because this person looks good right away, but that you're fully vetting them. And that's one of the biggest things that we can do and how we help our clients pacing it and making sure that we wait to really see who somebody is over time. That's important. That's important. Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, Lindsay, let's, let's talk a little bit about the brass tacks of how we want to position ourselves in the next one to four weeks about peak dating season. So get your notebooks out. And I want to tell you a couple of things and you know what, maybe you've heard this from us before, but remember repetition is how we absorb information and repetition. Even if you've heard this before, remember knowledge is not power. Knowledge without action is nothing. Execution is power. So I want you to think about number one, what app or site are you going to quote unquote, maybe relaunch yourself or launch yourself on? So let's talk a little bit about that. What I want you to know is if you're on six, seven, eight, ten 10 different apps right now, I want you to consider slimming it down, lose some weight in your dating apps. (laughs) I I agree. I think what's a good strategy is start off slow, start off maybe with one, the max two, and then after you've worked that for a while, because anytime that you launch brand new on an app, that's where you're going to get your profile and your is going to be seen the most. So you want to capitalize on having a really good launch where the most people are going to see you. And then the longer you're on something, it's almost like you fall a little further back in the search. So that's a good time then to relaunch somewhere else. But if you start with all six at the same time, you're going to burn out really quickly. And then you're not going to feel like you have anywhere else to go. Once everything starts to slow down, which it always does, which it does for every single person out there. That's very normal. Yeah. I mean, I know this just brings to mind like makeovers I've done on set at Steve Harvey on GMA. And it's amazing to me. People will say I'm on eight different apps right now. And I'm like, think about being on eight different anythings. If you were on eight different weight loss plans, like how effective (laughs) would it be? It would be like, oh my God, wait, I shouldn't eat carbs. Wait, I should eat carbs. Wait, I should eat high fat. Wait, I should eat low fat. You can't, you'll spin yourself in a circle and you'll end up feeling frustrated and confused. So focus like anything big in life. You have to focus on a couple of things, maybe one or two things in order to be able to make any movement on that. So pick a site or an app that's good in your city, that's good in your age bracket. And I can hear your thought right now. Well, what is that? Tell me what the secret is. Well, here's the big secret. And it's a secret you're not going to want to hear. There is no one perfect dating app or one perfect site, Lindsay, right? We've had clients. Yes, everyone's like, we are all the good people. I'm like, they're everywhere. There's not one site where where we're like, we're going to tell you the secret that nobody else knows. It really is it's really what's right for you, but we also like to play and go where the numbers are the biggest. So look at the sites that have been around the longest. I think that's a good way to start and look where you can get the most information about the person that you're dating, because I think that's an easier way to screen in for red flags as well. But the key to, yes, should I see? I, it's something just came to mind. I can tell. It, it, when you get on a site or an app, there's something called anchoring that happens in our brains. And let's say you were on, you know, Bumble, okay, a year ago. And you get on Bumble and you start swiping and you're like, oh my God, there's the guy in the reindeer antlers. He's been on here every year with these photos. And what happens at that point? When we see one person that we might've seen in the past, we feel, we often feel 
frustrated. We feel discouraged. We feel like, oh my God, I've run through the inventory already. It's all the same stuff. Now, is that a true thought, Lindsay? No, it's actually just the magical way that our brains work because we have to sort through all of this information and stimuli. So we notice and remember the things that we've seen before. And it's not true. That one guy in Rudolph costume, whoever <laughs> he is, is not the only data out there in the pool. Your brain just tr- remembered it. And then you can just move on and find somebody else that you've never seen before. They're everywhere. <laughs> right. So when you relaunch yourself and you see the guy or the gal, or a few that you've seen before, remember, oh, wait, there are 118 million single adults in this country. So I recognize two, that's okay. That's okay. Because this is just my brain looking for familiarity, which again, our brains want to make us feel comfortable, right? We're like, oh, I recognize that this is safe. Don't feel like this is going to be the same old, same old, right? So yeah. don't let that happen to your brain now. And be- remember the client, sorry to interrupt. This yeah, no, true. please do. Remember a client, we had. A, I, we may have talked about this on an earlier podcast, but she had, um, she relaunched with us on a site And one of the guys that wrote her was somebody she had seen before when she had been on before. And she's like, oh, no, no, I've decided I think he's way too busy for me. I said, well, look at this message. I'm going to jump ahead and tell you she is now married to this man because she would have ignored him because she'd seen him before. But she didn't really interact with him before. She just remembered him and had that same experience. I'm like, write him again. It's a fresh start, guys. This is a reset. Unless you've had... Unless they have red flags and you've had a bad experience, just because you've seen them before, if this person keeps writing you back and liking you, well, clearly they're liking you for a reason. Give them a chance too, if there are no red flags. If there's no red flags, right? So 100%, you never know, right? We've told, I've told you guys the story of our client that had five good dates with somebody and then was ghosted. He took her out on her birthday and then ghosted her and then came back two years later and we slowly paced it and they are now happily living together because sometimes people realize I made a big mistake and I did my work and now I'm coming back wholeheartedly. But if you feel like, yeah, no, This person kind of comes back around all the time over the holidays. We just talked about winter coding, an ex that comes back to you around the holidays, right? (laughs) Because they don't want to be alone and they want some dates for the holidays and they put you on like a winter coat. And as soon as the weather gets warm, they shed you again. So no, to your point, Lindsay, and to what I'm saying is... You never know. Give someone a chance. If you're not sure that this person is toxic or you're being winter coated, give something a chance. And if you need help, good Lord, reach out to us. This is what we do every day is we help you to make sure something is savory versus unsavory. And I'm not talking about salty meat savory. I'm saying like, (laughs) is this a good person or a wolf in sheep's clothing? Kind exactly. Of and if it's a wolf in sheep's clothing, delete their like or delete them or hide them from search and then just move on and focus on all the other millions of people that you've never seen or switch up your search a little bit so that you can restructure how you're looking at people, change something with your profile. But yes, I know. I'm really glad that was a really good point. I could see it in your eyes, Bella. You were about, you had, you were inspired by an idea. I was inspired by you, Lindsay Anderson. Oh, thank you. But you're right. As you're thinking about sites too, we should talk about photos, Bella. That's yeah, let's do that. Important thing. Go there. Go sites. there, friend. Go there. Guys, the photo is your marketing in cyberspace, having excellent photos. We talk about this all the time and I mean it. Your photos, that is what is going to get the click. It is the most important thing that you have great photos. Now, we are in the holiday season and there's a lot of time where you get to put on some sparkle right now, or you may be dressed up and you're going out. I'm going to highly recommend when you are dressed in looking your best, please, please, please hand your iPhone or your 
camera phone to anybody, have somebody take a picture with good lighting. You, um, don't over filter, but use portrait mode, but take pictures of yourself. And if you are not going to holiday parties, go through your closet and put on that dress you always wish you could wear and still have somebody take your picture. Amen, sister. Exactly. I've been wearing a lot of sequins in the last week or so, and I, I have not had anybody take a photo and I probably no, should possible. because it's the it's it's sparkle time. And yes, take pictures of yourself, right? If you yes. you can set the timer on your camera, have good headshots. OK, now let's kind of go there for a second. Photos are critical and have a good photo of yourself. That's a good headshot. And that's some janky old photo that's sitting in your iPhone from three or four years ago. Yes. Get your face ready, men yes. and women. Okay. Groom it up, shine it up, sparkle it up. You do you boo. You know how you look good. I don't need to give you advice on that and make sure you're in good lighting. One thing that I see all the time when I do these online profile analysis sessions with people, they hire us for an hour. Can you go in and look at my profile and give me counsel? Cause they might not be ready to have full coaching yet. Great. Okay. Okay. Most people have blurry photos, photos that are old or photos where they have all kinds of shadows on their yes. face. I'm like, look yeah. at the photos that we have on our site. Maybe the spirit will call me to post some new photos mm -hmm. on our website. We're going to redo our website in 2023. I and I know you guys. That's hold one of me our goals. Yes. We're working on it. <laughs> it's a huge goal, but I'll tell you what, having good photos where you look good and you look like the real version of yourself. We have a zero Photoshop policy at our studio at Smart Dating Academy. And for the thousands of you that have come to us and worked with us and taken photos, you know that there is art and science to good photography, right? So look at our site, see if you can pull photos that look like that. If you need help, for God's sakes, reach out. There is help. And remember, give yourself a gift like you give everybody else. If you've been listening to this podcast all year, we're almost at our year anniversary of the podcast, Yay. right? Do something good for yourself. Hire experts. It might be us. It might be somebody else. Yes. I don't care. You do you, but do something that's going to get you to a better place this year. Invest in yourself because the definition of insanity Keep the same pictures up, do the same True. stuff over and yes. over again. And you and don't want like, people recognizing you your photos. This is the perfect time to completely, if we bring it full circle, have new photos up so they don't think the same thing you're thinking when you see the guy in the Rudolph hat. And, right? It's That's so hilarious. If you can true. see my face, I'm like inhaling oxygen around that. <laughs> you don't want to be, oh, there's that woman in the purple sweater again. Yes. There she is with her green earrings. Like I remember that. Nope. Yeah. Let's just he pass knew. her by. But the key with the photos is approachability. And we see this too, when we do the online photo labs of so many pictures of people wanting to look mysterious or sexy and they're pouting or they're looking a little bit off to the side or they're looking away. The key is you want to look directly at the camera. You want to connect with the person who's looking at your photo and please smile and show your teeth, show your teeth and smile, be warm. I'm online with our clients every single day going through inboxes. There are not enough men who smile in photos. I'm going to just put that out there, guys, if you're listening. Gentlemen, did you hear that? Say it again for people Listen in the back. Listen to me. The, I will tell you the photos our clients connect with are the ones where men look happy, warm, safe, confident. There are so many things that come from a smile. It's the... It tells a million different things. So you want to attract a happy, positive person into your life. You have to be that happy, positive person in your photos. Do not try to be too sexy. Don't pout. Smile warm. Smile big. Look like you are smiling at your favorite person on earth and take a picture. And all the research shows that we don't pick the best photos of ourselves. Ah, so true. So... When you take all of the tips that Lindsay just gave you, I 
would love for you to commit to yourself that you are going to take your new photos and have someone else tell you, someone that isn't like, oh, honey, everything you do is spectacular. And they (laughs) never say, you know, I don't think that's the best photo of you. Have your friends that are elevator people that you love, they're in your village, that also will tell you the honest truth. Is that photo flattering, right? There are times, Lindsay and I, can we get our photos taken and she might say to me, I hate that photo of myself. And I'm like, no. You're like, I'm posting it right now on our site. I'm posting it anyway. (laughs) And she's like, I hate that photo. I'm like, you remember, we don't look at ourselves in a fair light, or more importantly, in the light that others see us. So have someone else say, that's actually the better photo of you. Because you might be looking at some freckle on your arm that no one in the world sees or something on your cheek. Nobody sees it. is going to notice you. And, and everybody's so critical of themselves. And you don't, we don't want you, yeah. don't look at yourself with a critical mindset too. One hundred percent. I'm in our photo studio a lot with our clients that come in to work with us. And I'm not always there, but I'm there a good amount of time. And I can tell you, everybody's picking apart different things in themselves. Oh my God, my legs are too white. I should have gotten a spray tan. I'm like, your legs look amazing. I would love to take your legs and put them on my body, (laughs) right? It's all, don't pick yourself apart, but have great photos and please pick new photos of yourself. Change them up because it's the new year and why not? Take some new photos of yourself and show someone else the photos, right? And have a good wide repertoire. Don't give someone six photos of yourself and say, well, I need to post six photos. Are these good enough? People, if you're going to give people choices, you need to give them more. If you want to post six photos and six, by the way, is the ideal amount of photos to have posted. Now, don't get daunted by that. Don't throw your arms up in the air and say, well, how am I supposed to get six new photos? You know what? Everything is possible. And if you really want to, you can dress yourself up in six different outfits, take photos, have someone take them of you, call us. We'll get you into the photo studio. Whatever it is, everything is possible, but don't, if you can get one or two new photos, that's better than that's nothing, great right? too. Absolutely. And make sure Nelly with the headshots that you do have good full body shots, head to toe. People do want to date who they see in the photos. So however, whatever you do, however you wear your hair or your glasses, just wear whatever it is, you're, how you're going to show up on a date, look like that person in your photos, but have fun with it. Over the holidays, this is a great time to take all these pictures, get yourself ready, spruce up your profile, think about fun things that you did last year, little weight highlights, things that you can tweak that you're going to write. Be positive in what you put out there too. But remember, the photos are first. People like, they go especially... Well, women like to analyze the profiles. If I'm going to just generalize, guys, this is not true for everybody, but we read the profiles and analyze who the person is. And a lot of the men just look at the pictures and then skim your profile to make sure you sound nice and normal. That's kind of the way to look at it loosely. Exactly. And along with that, you know, people will look at photos and we're all visual, right, Lindsay? I mean, our female clients look at male men's photos, sometimes grimace, like, oh my God, who told this person this was a good photo, right? We all- No more fish photos, guys. No more bathroom selfies. (laughs) We've seen it all. And people just don't know what to do. So when you look at photos, look at it with radical empathy, like, oh, bless their heart. They just didn't know better. And- and move on, but be kind. With be kind, number one, be kind to yourself, be kind to others. And when you're writing your profile, think about the little one sentence stories that will give somebody food for thought about yourself. And I've done a lot of sessions in the last week with people that overthink their profiles. Well, I don't know if I want to put that detail in there, right? Like, I don't know that that's like the best thing about me. And I'm saying, I don't 
real, I'm not bothered if it tells the full story about you because 200 words can never yes. tell the full story about you. Two hours with you yes. will never tell the full story about you. So yes. you want to pick interesting things. Think about your profile as if I had you make a top 10 funny, quirky things list about Lindsay or Bella. <laughs> what would go on the, that list? Things people might not know about me or things that are actually interesting that other people haven't done. That's how I want you to think about your profile yeah. and put Conversation in starters. <laughs> those kinds of things. Like, would you ever think someone who's my size, you know, five, two and a half, right? Small human, small skeleton has taken motorcycle riding lessons. No, you would not <laughs> think that. Would you ever think that I decided one day that I wanted to take a flying lesson and I made Andy go with me as my co-pilot along with somebody at Powaki Airport? No, you might go, wait, who's taking flying lessons and who's taking yes. motorcycle lessons and almost had a permit. Thank God I found out I was pregnant with Jaden and that whole motorcycle thing had to be put to bed. But Right. You might not know that about me, but that would be an interesting little bit to put in your online profile. Right. And Lindsay, I'm sure you have those fun, quirky little things like you're a helicopter skier. Yes. Well, and there's, and I do you remember the list that came out when Facebook first launched a million years ago and everybody created the list of 20 things about me. No one knows. And then once you start writing a few of those, it sort of leads to the next. So do that own version of yourself over the holidays. Just start jotting notes down. I always have my best thinking when I'm blow drying my hair. So I keep a bit of paper nearby or an iPhone notes. But think about as little things come to mind, jot them down and keep a list and you can refresh them. But it's really conversation starters. Somebody does not need to know your whole life story. But the profile really does need to be about you, and then a little bit about who you want to meet. But the whole profile shouldn't be all about everything that you want in your future person. Make sure it stays balanced with what you write. Exactly. And have fun with it and keep it positive And don't put any disclaimers at the bottom. Don't contact me if you better look like your pictures. Like none of that, guys. Eliminate it because it won't reflect as well on you as we think. And sometimes we want to overcorrect if we've had experiences online before by thinking we need to write all the things we don't want. Don't do it. Don't do it. As I say, don't write the don'ts. Don't do the don'ts. Don't do the don'ts. Either. Don't do the don'ts. That. Don't do the don'ts. And, yeah. and have somebody read your profile for your tone. Yes. Guys, tone oh, is so everything. undervalued in life. Okay especially in writing, your tone carries through. Oh. And many times when we write, we go a little tone deaf. Yeah. Or we write quickly in the middle of our work day, or we don't think about the written word. People don't hear your voice. So they interpret whatever it is that they're going through at that time with whatever they receive. So this goes the same for messaging. When you are messaging back and forth online, add an exclamation point, add, don't over emoji, don't over smiley face, but find ways to elevate the tone and look like you're an enthusiastic, positive person. Don't write one word answers like, okay. Or if he asks you out or she asks you on a date, don't say that sounds good, period. Period. <laughs> because everybody wants to date somebody who's excited to meet them. And when you're exchanging messages, especially once it moves to text messages, a good way is keep conversation going, answer with enthusiasm or ask questions at the end of your text messages. So it's a volley back and forth until it goes on too long. You can say, well, really enjoyed talking with you. Let's connect again tomorrow and then close the chat. But make sure that your tone comes across. Sometimes if you just read what you write out loud, to yourself and you say it out loud, you hear how it might come across to others. So sometimes you might want to reread your own messages before you hit send. 100%. And on that note, also, when you read someone's messages that might seem cold, curt, abrasive, ask yourself, yes. could this be my filter? Could I be reading this message with the tone that wasn't intended? 
I do this a lot. I will put on a filter where I'll read someone's message. I'm like, oh, that seemed a little short. Don't do that. Change yeah. your own mindset and know, I know this person. They didn't mean that, right? Yeah. And if you didn't know, if you don't know this person, give them radical empathy and the benefit of the doubt. They just don't know better. And they're yes. not wearing your filter. So put on a different filter when you're reading. So you want to be the positive person, but then when you're getting the messages, give somebody the positive filter when you're reading their messages. Okay. So I think what we want to write in skywriting as you're yeah. starting the dating in this new, in the new year is assume positive intent, assume best intention with everything that you do. Assume it when you're looking at their pictures online and their profile, assume it when you're getting that message Assume it when they're asking you, everybody, it takes a lot of effort and we have tremendous empathy. It is very brave to put yourself on a dating site and every single person who's doing it has good intentions. And I'm telling you, there are more good daters out there. There are more good people out there than bad. The bad, really, they just make for good stories. So you might hear those, but that's not the real reality of what we're seeing. But I love what you're saying, that when you get a message that might seem a little short, to look at it through a different lens because people's people are good. People are good. Everybody. Yeah. Nobody means to be that way. I know Jaden, my daughter and I were texting about a month ago and she was asking me some questions about dating actually. And I was messaging her back. And she said to me on Sunday, she's like, are you mad at me? I'm like, no, why? She says, well, I just saw your responses and they weren't your normal responses. My own daughter <laughs> asked me if I was mad at her. I'm like, no, why? And so again, was it the way I was messaging her or could it have been her filter? Most likely, maybe it was some of both. And I took, I said, you know what? I'm really sorry. That was so not my intention. I'm not mad at you at all, but I'm sorry that I, my words made you feel that way. She's like, it's okay. And maybe I just read it with the wrong eyes, right? Take responsibility, especially even if my intentions weren't that way, own your stuff. Yes. Oh, that's such a good point. Such so a good point. our moods are, contagious. well, yeah. listen, with peak dating season, you've got, you know, two out of three queen psychotic optimists here. And we, Eileen, we have you here in spirit with us. What we want you to know is if you feel called to it, please reach out to us. Sometimes people think that we're, they're in an echo chamber and we're on some mountaintop really high somewhere and we're inaccessible and we're just this voice that comes through your AirPods or through your iPad. or Passing you in the park when you don't have mascara. Passing you in the park when you don't have sunglasses and a hat on and you're running. We're accessible people and we have an accessible service. And if we can help you to change your mindset, get you better photos, have some eyes on your profile to see that it sounds like you, or more importantly, if you need a personal trainer for your love life, I'm telling you, there's no one better and there's no one more fun to do this with than with us. So if you're listening to this, take a deep breath, tell yourself, I'm worth it. I deserve it. Send an email and at least explore how we could help you or how somebody could help you. Maybe it's a therapist. Maybe it's whomever. Do something for yourself because you are a gift to the world and you deserve all of the things that you give to others. So I wish you only things that are good. I hope that Lindsay and I get to know so many of you during peak dating season, because you want the help yes. in this process that thousands of you have reached out for. We're here. We're not, you know, are you there? God, it's me. No, we're here. <laughs> we're real we people in the flesh, in the blood that will keep you on the ground, boots on the ground, doing the right thing yeah. and staying positive through the process. Yeah. Encouraging you every step of the way. Really. So with that, I, we wish you well. We wish you big love this week. 
And until next week, um, get yourself ready for peak dating season, do the right things. And we're sending you a giant cyber hug because I'm really proud of you for thinking about being prepared for peak dating season, which officially starts December 26th. The busiest online dating date is January 8th. So ladies and gentlemen, get it together. Get your big boy and big girl pants on and say, I want love for the new year. And what is something I'm going to do for myself every single day to get closer to that. So with that, until next week, we send you a giant cyber hug. Goodbye. Goodbye.